Hi, Ant Scandinavia here, and today we're going to make an ant plaster nest. Let's get started. First, you need some tools and materials. These are a clear acrylic box with a lid, plaster, clay, a bucket, and I'm going to use a Dremel, but you can use what works for you, water, and a cup. So we will begin by cutting in the lid. For that I'm using a Dremel, as I said. Use safety goggles when doing this, because the plastic will fly off the lid whilst it is in a molten state. And believe me, you don't want to get that on your skin, or even worse, your eye. Start by marking the area you want to cut out. Leave a ledge on all sides for the barrier to be applied on upside down. Start by drilling a hole in the center. Then widen that hole like so. And then use a normal sanding tool to cut it all out. Lid done. Now it's time to form the actual nest. Use the clay for this. Cut some out, the amount you need. The rest of the clay, that is if you get some leftovers, put it in rolls of plastic for it to be airtight and not to harden, so that you can use it again. Then you're ready to go. Soften the clay by squishing it, and then put it on the side where you want the entrance to be. Continue doing this to create tunnels and cavities all around the box. Remember that you're building the cavities invertedly, you aren't carving out the cavities. The clay formation you make on the side will be the exact size and dimensions of the finished product, so be picky about it. Make sure that all parts are wide enough for ants to pass through, and that all parts are connected securely. All done! Now it's time to make the plaster. I didn't really use any real measurements for this, I just went on the gut feeling. However, you are going to add the plaster in a soft powdering motion, not all at once, because then there will be lumps in the plaster. Also, you know it's done when it starts to form quote unquote islands on the surface. The consistence of the plaster should be like yogurt when it's done. See, the plaster isn't sinking anymore, that means it's perfect. When you see the large islands that forms on the surface, start stirring it to avoid as many lumps as possible. Very nice. Now it's just to pour it down in the nest, but first double check that all looks good, this is your last chance. Don't pour the plaster onto the clay, since it may fall off the sides of the box. Fill it up all the way to the top, so that only the entrance is visible. If you see little defects like this, that the plaster has sipped through the clay, don't worry, we can take care of that later. Wait a couple hours, until it has dried a bit, then take it out to the container. This may take a while, but be persistent, you will get it out eventually.
What you're going to do now is to take away the clay. Remove it with caution so that you don't break the plaster. Perfect. What I did later was that I painted the white part of the plaster with clay mixed with water. This creates a more natural feeling, however when you put it back into the container the beautiful brown paint will be scraped off at some places unfortunately. But the cavities inside will look great. So now to that part, putting it back. When doing this part, you really want to be delicate so you don't break the next or the box, but it is super hard to get it all the way down. But as I said earlier, be persistent. Now it's time for the decorations. I covered the surface with sand to make it look a bit more natural. Then I added some moss. This moss I found growing on mud, so it will do fine on sand, as long as you keep it really moist. I added some more rocks and also a twig. And there you have it, a nice looking plaster nest for your ants. Apply the barrier on the bottom side of the lid to make it escape proof. If you like to build nests as I do, check out this video on how to make your nest in Whitehall. And subscribe to see when one of my ant colonies move into the new nest. Hope to see you soon.